are you a slow runner or have you been running really well and just finding over time that you're getting slower and slower and you don't really know why it can be really frustrating it has definitely happened to me it's so disappointing you feel like you should be making progress you know you're training hard and you should be seeing results but instead you just feel like you're getting more and more like a snail I want to help you with that and give you some ideas and some reasons as to why it might be happening. Now, I do want to start by saying that slow doesn't necessarily mean bad. Slow running can be good. I love slow running. There isn't, you know, there's no reason to want to go faster. You don't have to go faster. Running can be any pace or speed that you enjoy. Some of the most fun I've had has been at the back of races when I've been one of the last to finish. And one of my all time favorite runs is a long, slow, chatty run with a friend. So this isn't for you if you're always thinking that speed is the most important thing. This is really just if you're struggling with your running pace at the moment and you don't really know why. So what are some of the reasons that you might be slowing down without meaning to? Well, I've got seven. The first one is that it might just be life. Life gets in the way. Life can be busy. Life can be stressful. It can throw all sorts of things at you. Running needs energy, but so does life. And if life is using up a lot of your energy, there's often very little left for your running. Now, I know that running can help you get through life, but sometimes you just have to be realistic about the balance and you just have to work out if there's an awful lot going on that you can't just delegate and get rid of. It may have a knock on effect to your running. So don't be too hard on yourself. Sometimes you do just have to cut back a little bit um, and just maybe enjoy the running for what you've got and how you were performing at the time, rather than putting more pressure on yourself to perform better when there's pressure coming from all the other things going on as well. Number two could be your menstrual cycle. If you're a menstruating woman, then you may well find there are times in your cycle when you don't run as fast as others. Now, the science behind this is a little bit, mm, there's nothing to say that particular times of your cycle, you're going to feel this and you're going to feel that. You should do this exercise at this time and this exercise at another. But what there is evidence to say is that it's a very individual thing. And the best thing that you can do, if you think this might be the case, is to track your cycle, track how you're performing, track where you are in your period cycle and see if there is a link. Is there always a time of the month when you don't run as well as others? Can you mix things around? Are you always finding that premenstrually before your period that you are just tired, bloated, can't get any energy, etc.? Are you better doing those runs earlier on in your cycle if you're really wanting to put in that hard effort? Might be better to be just after your period when you do it or even during your period. So just have a little play with that and see. Could be a link, might not be. Third one on the same kind of theme is actually the perimenopause. Now, if you are a woman who is in the perimenopause, um, which is the time leading up to the menopause, the menopause is when you haven't had a period for 12 months. During the time leading up to that in the perimenopause, you can get an awful lot of symptoms which affect your body and which can then have a knock on effect to your running. And some women find their performance drops. They're not able to do those harder sessions as well as they used to be. It may be that the niggles and the side effects and those are sometimes not just niggles, sometimes awful things that you can feel during the perimenopause, such as aching joints, low energy, headaches, hot sweats, etc., are having a knock on effect to your ability on your ability to actually run so that it could be that. And again, it's often a time to not put too much pressure on yourself and to enjoy running for other reasons other than speed and doing what you can. I've got a great resource coming for runners who are in the perimenopause. Uh, Head to my website, drjulietmcgratton.com, sign up and subscribe and you'll get a notification when that resource comes live, which is very, very soon. So that's very exciting. Third thing, fourth thing even, overtraining. Are you doing too much? Sometimes you feel if you want to get better, you just need to do more and more. But sometimes less is more. Your body needs time to rest, recover, repair and strengthen itself before you go again. And if you don't give it that time and you have too many sessions 
um, intense sessions too close together and don't allow enough recovery time, then you might find your performance actually drops rather than improves. So just be very careful to make sure that you're not cranking up distances too quickly, you're not cranking up the intensity of your runs too quickly, and that you are definitely giving yourself enough rest time. And that includes sleep time as well. Number six, yeah, number six is inadequate fuel. Are you eating enough to fuel the energy, to fuel the exercise that your body wants to do? So are you putting enough petrol into your tank? You need petrol to run your car. You need fuel to run your body. And sometimes if you are particularly busy, you might not be eating as much as you think because you just haven't got time to prepare things or you just don't, yeah, you just don't prioritize your diet very much. Other times you maybe feel like you're eating really well, but perhaps you're eating exactly the same as you were, but you've increased your exercise. It's very easy to get an imbalance between the exercise you're doing and the calories that you're consuming particularly if you are trying to run to lose weight as well. This balance can be quite difficult to get. And if you find yourself in negative energy balance, it can have an effect on your body. You may have heard of relative energy deficiency in sport, red S, some people call it reds, where this negative energy balance has a significant impact on all different systems in your body. Now, it isn't always intentional. It's not always linked to eating disorders. Sometimes it is accidental. So we all need to be really, really mindful of that. And I do have a podcast uh, recorded with Renny McGregor, who is a specialist sports dietitian in this area, explaining all about REDS. Again, head to my website and you'll see it there in my blog. Okay, um, not training smartly. This is a big one as well. I mentioned before about overtraining, but it's not just overtraining. It is actually how are you planning your week out? What does your training schedule look like? If you do speed run, speed run, speed run, hill run, then you're really going to put a lot of stress on your body. Just have a look at your overall week. Not, don't put those intense sessions close together. Allow rest days in between them. Make sure you've got a nice mix through your week of speed work, maybe some, um, some cross training, a nice long slow run, a tempo run. So you've got a good mixture. And if you really are working on your speed, yeah, have a couple of speed sessions a week, but not too many and certainly not close together. Train smarter, not harder is what they say, isn't it? So again, just look at your schedule. And I would say every fourth or fifth week, make sure you have an easier week. So you're building up the intensity, then you have an easy week. You build up the intensity, then you have an easy week. And that allows your body to adapt as well. And finally, my last one is inconsistent running. Sometimes our expectations are just wrong. And I definitely fell foul of this myself, thinking, why am I just getting slower and slower? This is so depressing. And then I realized, you know what, actually, I'm not running that much and I'm going out and expecting myself to be faster. So really, if we want to make progress and we do want to get faster, we do need to run consistently. It may not be masses, but it needs to be consistent. So be honest with what you're doing and your expectations of yourself. There might be a little bit of a mismatch. I do want to point out that I haven't included age in this list. Yes, as we get older, inevitably at some point, uh, we won't be able to reach our PBs and we'll have less power and speed and our running performance from that point of view will decline. But, and I, again, I include myself in this, so many of us come into running late. And I really do firmly believe that with hard work, I can still achieve PBs. So I think we shouldn't just assume because we're older that that's the end of it. You know, I think we can still work hard, particularly as I say, if you came into running late, there may still be lots of personal bests ahead of you. So let's not get too ageist about this. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I, I really, you know, I hope it's helped me just take away, take a step back, look at some of the reasons that might be affecting you, and making you feel that you're going more slowly than you want to. At the end of the day, you know, running is always there. If you need to take a break, if you need to run for another reason run for pleasure run to look at the scenery run to chat to your friend sometimes a little time away just gives a, a different perspective on things and then go back into it again running will always be there it's always waiting for you and it really doesn't care how fast you go it's not bothered what speed you're going it just wants you to enjoy it head to drjulietmcgratton.com for lots more running tips and advice thank you everybody see you soon